All right, folks, hold on to your butts. Today, we are talking about our worst films of 2018. That and more on today's episode of The Real Review. So stay tuned. Welcome to The Real Review. Welcome to The Real Review, sponsored by Parametric and Lazy Ape Studios, where you get some of the latest happenings, real thoughts, and perspectives in the world of film and television. Everybody, I am here with Joel likes to make snarky faces at me, Cunningham! <laughs> you came up with that on the spot, yeah, I had I did. a feeling. Well, I'm, I had a different one, but then you changed my mind. Yeah, I was making more of a I'm not happy to be here okay. face. <laughs> yes, face. we are once again returning to our... Land of unhappiness. Right. At least I am. <laughs> right. I have to remember all these films. I... <laughs> it was harder for me to come up with a worst of list than you. Yes. I yes. Know. Yeah. yeah. I wonder why that is. Who am I today, Joel? I am here with Matt Monkey Noises. Hey. Monkey Noises. When did that make monkey noises? Like two minutes ago. Oh, really? You were trying to do Yoda, but it, it sounded more like a monkey, so I don't think you realized. It wasn't actually Yoda. Yeah, it was. It was <laughs> the seagulls. It was the, yeah, se- the seagulls. Song. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. what it was from. But that's what I got. Anyways, welcome everybody to the show. It is so good to have you. Uh, the Real Review, um, we uh, just celebrated a hundred episodes, which is super cool. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a contest going on right now. Yeah. Let's talk about that real fast. Uh, you can get entered in to win a contest basically to go with Joel and myself mm-hmm. uh, if you live here obviously here in Arizona to the movies yeah. and we'll buy your ticket and some concessions and we'll debate the movie with you afterwards all you got to do is go to facebook.com uh, Instagram uh, find the post there you got to like it follow and then comment hashtag real review 100 yeah we've already got a bunch of people yeah in, and uh, we'd love to have you join and be a part of the contest celebrating our 100 episodes absolutely yeah. and uh, also um, just in case today a little different because we're not reviewing movies specifically where we have lists that we're going over but yeah typically the real review joel's a little bit more uh cynical critical analytical and yes all the alls <laughs> and all those things and <laughs> the alls. potentially more negative i'm a little bit more maybe positive optimistic uh like you know did i ha- did i have fun was it impactful yeah. to me and i'll tend to overlook some guy. of those things yeah yeah more glass kinda. half empty guy uh but it's not to say that we can't you know dabble in each other's territory a yeah. little bit yeah yeah and, so uh, that's yeah that's how that works we bring those together give you the real review and uh joel how can people get connected to this well matt matthew there's a number of good ways yes. <laughs> to get connected to the podcast and the vidcast uh the real review media.com which is our website we'd love to have you check us out on there and then additionally facebook which is where we're doing the contest where we post a lot of our content uh, we just posted, I think, some cool posters that came out for some movies. Yeah. Um, probably going to be doing some trailer reactions as well. Yeah. John Wick but and Spider Man. Yeah. Spider- Spiderman. Spiderman. Uh, and then uh, you can find us there on facebook.com slash real review media. And then additionally, we have Twitter and Instagram, which are both at real review media. Uh, and then we have our YouTube, youtube.com slash the real review. Yep. And then last but not least, we'd love to hear your thoughts and perspectives of the year that has gone by in 2018. And anything else you want to talk to us about, we uh, try to be in communication with our listeners and fans and followers and all that stuff uh real review media at gmail.com if you want to reach us directly absolutely well yeah. done joel thank you back to you stan <laughs> oh, okay wait wait no this is not stan. a news break, I guess. um not at all. okay i so, wish i wish we could throw it back, <laughs> back to, to stan because now we're gonna you, go into greg some, some uh, tough let, territory let's see what's going on in sports over yeah, with steve I'm okay go cry in a corner yep <laughs> so yeah we are going to be talking about our top 10, with some dishonorable mentions, by yes. the way, yeah. our top 10 worst films of 2018. We're going to start that. If you uh, watched or listened to last episode, you heard our best of list mm-hmm. and some honorable mentions. This is the opposite of that. It's the less fun version of that. And it's more fun for some. Maybe for you, huh? I, well, I think for listeners, probably more fun because <laughs> okay. we just we sit here and we just bash on films for the yeah. next, you know, whatever. Sure. But uh, yeah, for me, it, it tends to leave me a little bit. Um, right. So Thal- mooded. So let's say <laughs> let's. So here's the thing. I feel like Joel's seen more bad movies than I have this year, and I haven't seen all the movies. We both haven't seen all the movies, so we'll preface that with saying, "Hey, uh, these are just the worst movies that we've seen. We know there's a ton of bad ones out there. We just don't get a yeah. chance to see them all. So uh, we'll we'll go with that." But oh, I see them all, man. You see them all, okay? <laughs> Accidentally on purpose. 
Okay, let's let's start off with our dishonorable mentions. Can I say this as well, though, as well? We mentioned this in the uh, best of, but these aren't it. necessarily uh, the worst reviewed. So some of these are going to have higher ratings than where we actually place them on our list right. than others. And that's really just because we tend to base this more on our personal impression of the film. And right. I try to impartially look at a film and say like the good merits of it and can actually rate it higher than my personal experience with right. it. Um, but really where I went with this was how did this film impact me and what were the negative feelings that I had towards mm. it and putting it together? <laughs> yeah. What were the negative feelings? You're like, I hate that. I can't talk about it on the <laughs> podcast because it's, you know, kid listeners. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. So with that, yeah, we can get into the. Let's do some dishonorable that. mentions. Now okay. I only have one on my list, but okay. you have like three. You said I do. Yeah. How about you roll Starting through your three? So my three, uh, for different reasons, but, uh, overboard. Okay. Oceans eight. Okay. And life of the party. Um, for different reasons, again, Overboard and Ocean's 8 both felt very unnecessary. Okay. Uh, I felt like they were trying to cash in on the popularity of something else and do it kind of like a new spin off of like where we're at and in our society now is Mm -hmm. ready for this like re-energized version or different version, but both ended up flopping. They were both, I think, very poorly written. Mm -hmm. Um, it had nothing to do with really casting, but- there was no dynamics. They they lost the most of them. They lost the entire both of them. I should say yeah. lost the spirit of the original and the interest that I had in them. Mm-hmm. And I love the Ocean's Eight or the Ocean's films for the most part. The originals, uh, the original remakes, I should say. Yeah. And then additionally, Overboard. The original Overboard is kind of like a it's a cult classic yeah. of a sort. Um, Life of the Party. I put it on a, a, a dishonorable mention uh, here just because there's going to be. I will explain reasons later, but mm-hmm. I really did not enjoy it. Yeah. Um, but there's reasons for why this is only on the dishonorable mentions that we will get to later in the recording. Gotcha. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> okay. I actually haven't seen any of those movies, so I'm there glad you, go. you got a chance to take the brunt of those hits for me. I appreciate there it. There you go. All right. My dishonorable mention is the first purge. Okay. Okay. Um, and I'm this, it's not a terrible movie. There's actually some stuff in it. That's, that's Okay. It just happened to fall and it wasn't as bad as the other 10 movies that I'm about to talk about. Okay. So um, at the same time, you don't you don't get a sense of like the characters of why it's happening. It had a chance to explore like the original the, where the purge came from and it just did it in a really sloppy way. And you didn't get a chance to really get a sense of it, it just it just glossed over it basically let's just say that that would could have been the interesting part of the story but it's just like just a muahaha kind of guy <laughs> behind the scenes is, yeah. is what it ended up being um but yeah so that's my dishonorable mention there you go and um, i didn't see that one yeah so okay. we both had ones see, we didn't get chance so to see. complimentary we are so complimentary yeah i'll be interested to see where our negatives yeah kind of line up in this because as we've stated we we don't talk to each other when we put these lists together we just right do that kind of makes it fun. You it know? does. It's a surprise. It's a you surprise. Know? Yeah. Well, Joel, yes. that brings us to number 10. What is our 10 worst film? All right. 10th worst film of the year. Starting off strong, at least for me, uh, one that might surprise some people, but uh, it's a film called Venom. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, I came into Venom actually really excited for it, and that may be part of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Venom is in a... Uh, Spider-Man is probably my favorite superhero we've yeah. talked about. Um, Venom, out of all the sort of nemesis is that nemesis, whatever you want to call it, that Spider-Man has faced yeah. is probably one of my favorite, mm-hmm. probably top three, if not the top one. And I really was excited to kind of see it have its own standalone flair, its own standalone feeling. Yeah. Um, and there's been inklings of that in the original trilogy that came out with Tobey Maguire. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was like, okay, cool. We're going to like get a Venom and maybe that'll tie into the whole cinematic universe somehow, eventually, maybe potentially, um, even though they're kind of like different studios and stuff. Um, and really just didn't get anything from it. Mm. I was disappointed. I felt like the characterization they gave Venom in the film was silly at times mm. and kind of stupid. Yeah. The jokes that they made and the, the zaniness in a sense of, uh, not a fan of the zany, huh? No, not in this film. You know, I can love <laughs> zany in a comedy, but like Tom Animaniacs. Hardy's impression of the character within this of being Eddie Brock was like one moment he's this strong you know independent like uh, you know guy that goes out there and just does what needs to be done and then the, the next moment he's like completely crazy and he's like freaking out and and it's like biting he's weak and sad and biting lo- yeah and it was just silly 
And it felt like what they did to me a lot of times was like this was originally like an R film. Yeah. That they cut back to a PG-13. Totally. And then just the the edit was so jarring and so it was like simultaneously boring because I knew where everything was going mixed with um, I have no idea what's going on. Like things are just jumping around. Stuff's just <laughs> happening. I don't know what this is driving yeah. towards. The main villain is kind of like this. He's like a hero, anti-hero guy. It's yeah. like I didn't really know what they were going for with the villain. So it just really fell flat for me. Oh, yeah, and true. also Jenny Slate, I'm sorry, she does not, to me, does not play very good seriously, serious dramatic action movie yeah. role. You know, and yeah. I know her role in this was very limited, um, but it, everything about it was just kind of like when I think black. of Venom. I, I so I thought the movie was okay, yeah. but when I think of Venom, I think of all the the. Um, negative criticism it got just from the trailers before they even before the movie even came out yeah i the only thing i ever said about the the only thing thing that i had with the trailers is that you know i'm gonna i'm really gonna try and let it be what it is when it yeah. comes out in the theaters because i know the trailers can be super misleading yeah um, for sure. but the only thing that i consistently remember about the venom movie which is not a good thing is just the the whining that venom did yeah, of, yeah, yeah. well when i was on my whole planet yeah, yeah, yeah. these guys made fun of like that just is like the only thing about the film that stood out and that's like not a good thing that's not who venom is yeah in my mind Mind. It's so, true. Yeah, I mean, I know they'll make a sequel too, which also kind of ticks yeah. me off because it made bazillions of dollars. Yeah. Um, and it also got a really high fan. Uh, it made a user. billion dollars. Yeah. Like, what the heck? Well, like, in people reviewed it very well yeah. outside of critics, so it'll well, get a, it'll scores. get a sequel. Yeah, the audience scores and the money alone will will warrant a sequel. But I'm not looking forward to it. I I'm don't actually think it'll be good. I'm I'm looking forward to a sequel because I feel like they have a chance to make it better. I feel like I. That would be what if I was the optimist like yeah. you are. That's I'm the what I would optimist. think. Yeah. <laughs> Woody Harrelson's gonna be in it. There you go. Anyways, yeah. Okay, my number ten is Mortal Engines. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and uh, this was the the film that misled everybody to think that this film was um, directed by Peter Jackson. And it's not directed by Peter Jackson. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say it misled everyone to make them think it was a good movie, right? So, <laughs> which is like a lot of these, I guess. Th- this this movie has a lot of problems. Um, uh, the marketing, m- none of the trailers were ever good for this movie. They never really explained what it was. Um, they didn't really create a lot of buy-in or excitement or hype. Um, that's what a trailer is supposed to do. Mm. Uh, the movie itself, though, um, it doesn't have. It, it's so forgettable, um, but I will say it's at the top of my worst of list because uh, it does have that um, my guilty pleasure uh, like post apocalyptic vibe. Yeah, um, and I've always liked seeing how people, different people, different artists like imagine like a post apocalyptic world, and the visuals are really really good. Outside of that, um, the <laughs> I, I don't remember the characters um, <laughs> and I didn't, I wasn't emotionally connected to any of the characters. I didn't care if anybody died. There was this huge story about like this, this guardian and then the main person. And it, that was the thing I kind of cared about, but it was, it was more just for this like robot thing. Mm. And yeah, I cared more for a robot in this movie than any of the people. Yeah. Um, and it was just like, you, you don't get to, you didn't get to linger on any of the sets or any of the, anything very long. When something was interesting, it'd go to something else and it cut to someone else that was way less interesting. There's a person that was in the beginning of the movie that thought was going to be important. They didn't show up again to like the last act of the <laughs> film. And I was like, Oh, I forgot this person was even in the movie. Yeah. It was just bad. I, yeah. Anyways. Mortal Engines. Yeah. <laughs> it's one I didn't have a chance to see yeah. either. So okay. um I I was I was trying to give it the benefit of the doubt because I didn't know anything about it. I get I always give every movie the benefit of the doubt. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> you know me. Yeah. But I, I, I mean I was like, well, it's based on a book, you know, it's a completely right. in a sense new type of right. movie. But yeah. Yeah. So maybe I'll just okay. avoid it. Yeah. What you got next? What's number nine? Number nine. A film called Peppermint. Oh, okay. That's on your worst that? of list? Yeah, absolutely. I thought that movie was okay. Yeah, I. it's another one for people that maybe, it, it got a decent high audience percentage score. of audience scores. Yeah. Um, but for me, it really, it catered to like all the lowest common denominator type cliches of action thriller genres. And it feels like a movie that would have come out like, 10 years ago, but with like a bigger budget. The main thing it, I didn't like about that movie was the editing. Yeah, the editing was 
stupid and yeah. bad. And it, the music. It, the music was awful. <laughs> I felt like Jennifer Garner's role in the film. So it's it's your stereotypical sort of revenge thriller yeah. film with like, you know, people crazy gunfighting and yeah. shooting. Um, and maybe it's just me, but I'm like tired of these films that feature like endless hordes of like bad guys getting shot down by one overpowered person. John Wick? Yeah, I mean the thing the the thing that I'll say is there's a caveat with that is that when it takes place in kind of a fictional world, mm -hmm. like John Wick is kind of separated itself because it doesn't even really it feels like more of a fable. Yeah. Uh with this feels like it's very grounded in reality, like sure. they're trying to make this peppermint character like very real and mm -hmm. very this is our world. Um but she just happens to be somehow become this amazing assassin that is like capable of killing like hundreds of, you know, thugs, mm -hmm. bad guys and outsmarting them yeah. and um, it's one of those films where, again, you go like she'll walk into a room and suddenly everybody becomes a moron, you know, because she has to kill everybody. They they just they become idiots. So like, oh, well, I guess I can't shoot under something or, you know, like, <laughs> oh, no, she blocked me. I have to like run over here and put my arms in the air. So she I don't know. So it's just one of those <laughs> movies that just it, it hit all the stupid realms of me and the action wasn't suspenseful. I didn't care about her character or the struggle that she's going through. It was weird because I'm like. It's a really horrific thing that she went exactly. through. Exactly. She went through such a horrific thing, but it felt it felt so manipulated to me. It felt yeah. so like we have to just put her in this really crazy scenario that it like I didn't feel sorry for her as the character, you know? Yeah. In real life I absolutely would, but in this film I'm like, eh, it feels so manipulated. You know, oh, they're buying ice cream at the the, the carnival and having fun as yeah. a family. Oh no, they're I dead. Didn't, it, it's it did yeah. hit a lot of uh, like cliche stereotypes with that type of genre. I didn't think it was great or good for that matter, but I thought it was okay. Yeah. Um, it was like yeah. a cheaper version of a Liam Neeson action movie. And yeah. there's some of those I can I get. thought it was better than Taken 2 or 3 still. I haven't seen them. You haven't so seen I Taken 2 or 3? Nope. You don't need to. Yeah, that's a, Taken exactly. 1 is where it's at. Yeah, I mean, I, for, okay. so overall, this, this movie kind of was just like a drop in the bucket as right. far as like overall negative feelings. Mm -hmm. But after I saw the movie, I just was angered for a okay. few days about it because it, it just felt like... <laughs> Jennifer Garner that was like that really was really carrying with you for a long time two Negative, days that's what I'm saying when I, I get over a movie in like a day nah see like how it made me feel it doesn't about. stay with me that long when I watch a bad film or when we talk about it like this this is gonna impact me for a little while because I'm regurgitating <laughs> stuff that's like really been bad oh my gosh. for me okay. so I'm doing this for you podcast <laughs> doing this for you um so my number nine yeah my number nine is on the list because of the disappointment factor. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the worst reviewed movie, but it just means that maybe it hit me hard and I was disappointed in a big way. Yeah. Uh, and it is The Predator. Okay. Um, I loved The Predator growing up, one and two. Um, one was always a best sell. And um, this... I was hoping for like a return to form. Shane Black directed it. He was in the original Predator. I'm like, if anybody could bring this thing back, it's going to be Shane Black. <laughs> and it wasn't. It was awful. There yeah. was a lot of cringy like moments with dialogue, uh, the characters, the way that some things were written, the, some, some of the story beats were cheesy. Yeah. Um, the way they ended it was a huge eye roll. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh. And it was like they were, they were trying to set up this big thing and it it didn't even start. You can't set up a sequel if you can't get people to go see the first one to begin with, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just not good. I was so disappointed to let down. So that's why The Predator is on my list. You didn't like it either, right? I did not. We might be talking about it at some point. All right. Yeah. Okay. I'm talking more about it. Let's do that then. What's your number eight? My number eight is an interesting film. It's called Red Sparrow. Which is, ah, I think, one that you didn't have a chance to see. These like no good plan. Yes, which this, is, this yes. is not great Russian, but he's better than Jennifer Lawrence Russian. Yeah, I say we split 50-50. Yes. I, I felt like that was one of the big things. I mean, there was moments literally where Jennifer Lawrence's Russian accent would slip into, like, American. Really? Yeah, and it was like, that was just one of the things, but... She was so unbelievable as this like femme fatale type like, character. Like unbelievable? Yeah, no. Like unbelievable, no, man. More than negative. Oh, okay. I think if you went unbelievable. See, my unbelievable Un is a positive unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. That's more of the way I would say it. She was completely, her character had this like, you're trying to relate to her and connect mm -hmm. to her because she's had this like unjust circumstance that's been thrust upon her because of the actions of two people. Yeah. And the problem with setting something like that up in the beginning of the story is mm -hmm. that you completely remove her from where she was at 
and the reason for why she's doing what she's doing. Yeah. When you take her out of that, then it's like, well, now I can't connect where the story has come from. Yeah. So I have to reinvent and regurgitate reasons and figure out reasons for why I understand where she's at, where she's at. For sure. And I never did that. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it, it did this, it tried to do this weird, like, I think that's what they call it, but it's like sexpionage type thing where it's like, you know, <laughs> never heard of that. lots of nudity and, you yeah. know, femme fatale and, you know, seductress type stuff. Mm -hmm. But I, I, that just doesn't translate for me with Jennifer Lawrence. I've never gotten that she's more like the girl next door kind of character, you know, maybe with like some mental issues and kind of like that. She is the strong, independent type mm -hmm. person as well, but she doesn't play, like, she doesn't have that air of like, ooh, Jennifer Lawrence. I don't know. Maybe that's just okay. me. But um, I gotcha. the plot felt very predictable and okay. stupid. You kind of knew where everything was going. They kind of tried to throw some curveballs at you at certain times. Um, the violence at times was like over the top, okay. like weird. I was like, whoa, this is going really too intense um, for what this film is trying to be. Um, the Yeah, the story was stupid. I didn't care. <laughs> there was no like sense of like who the overall villain was in the film okay. and uh yeah so all overall right. uh really did not like it i ended up coming out of the film feeling worse off as a human wow so, yeah i, went I feel like i feel personally. like every time you see a bad movie your life has dramatically changed for the I, worse yeah i mean we maybe i will talk about it someday <laughs> but you know when you go see a movie you get an experience from it and yeah these films happen to have some very negative I experiences e i'm me. able to shake these things off for some reason i i know i remember i don't like it and the reasons why but whatever yeah. anyways let me bring it back over to uh, number eight on my side Sounds and good. that is a wrinkle in time <laughs> and um this movie is directed well. Uh, I think Ava DuVernay did well, but it was so weird. Yeah. It was just a weird movie. Um, I thought the story was weak. I get the plight of like the, the family element, the father daughter element. Um, but I will say this, this movie made me mad with the choice that Chris Pine made as the father towards the end of the film. I was like, this defeats all, this defeats the purpose of this whole connection. Like, why did he do that just now? And I remember feeling really upset about that. Uh, um, it didn't take me a day to shake it off or whatever, <laughs> but um, I slept it off later that night. Sure, yeah. but um, it was it was just such a weird film. Like, and then at the end, it started doing these like like your trademark sound where you're like, huh? You know, huh? <laughs> yeah. What what is going on? It was yeah. just incomprehensible. Uh, the characters were weird. I didn't care anybody about any of the characters except for the main character. They wanted to try and make the uh, the brother like a main piece too, but he was kind of like annoying a little bit. Okay. Um, man, I just I had a hard time with this movie. I was disappointed. I was excited for it, and it just did not live up to any uh, expectations from Ava's previous work. But uh, that's it. A wrinkle in time. Bam. All right. Let's well, what's your number seven? Number seven. A film called Solo, a Star Wars story. Are you serious? Yeah. I just watched this last night. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's on Netflix now. Yeah. Um, not planning on watching it again. Um, we've talked about this in the past. One of this the worst only movies one. of the year? Oh, yeah. Um, we oh, talked about man. this in the past. One of the things that goes a long way for me in a film is good cinematography. And I sure. can forgive a lot of acting issues or plot issues if a film has good, decent cinematography. Probably to my my fault okay because there's times where i'm like this movie's bad but i love cinematography <laughs> okay um this movie had really really bad cinematography uh to the point where there was time i don't know if they fixed it up for like the blu-ray or the you know the the, the release into theaters or home home systems or whatever uh but i mean there's literally times where you can't like see people's faces almost and it's not like it's purposefully being done because they're in like a dark environment that. i think yeah. it, i think it was uh, but there was there was numerous occasions. Yeah. There was like three or four times. I'm like, I think that's Han. You know, I think that's what they're, to, I, but I don't know. Um, so that was one of the big issues mm. for the film for me was the cinematography. Okay. okay. Um, secondarily, I didn't expect a lot from this because yeah. one, it's Ron Howard, which I don't have any personal issues with Ron Howard, but he tends to make very cookie cutter safe type films. Mm -hmm. um, but this film just didn't go anywhere. The main relationship between Han and Kira in the film felt very flat to me. Um, it felt more of like forced circumstantial type forced. situations. Yeah. Forced. Pun intended. Uh, than actual like love and being jilted and pushed apart type thing. Mm -hmm. um, the twists of the plot were also quite predictable mm -hmm. and kind of un 
unre- not unrealistic, but they were just kind of like motivated by where the plot needed to go okay. um, because of the fact that this is Han and he has to go to a certain direction in order to eventually meet up with, you know, Luke and Leia and all them. Um, so that was bad, bad. And then one of the, this is like the, this marked one of the first Star Wars movies that it ended. And I'm like, I have no interest to kind of see where it's going. Mm-hmm. You know, that I've personally right. seen, even with the original trilogy, I was like, well, this movie wasn't needed. I'm still kind of, no, but like they left it open for that mm-hmm. sequel aspect and they tried to throw in this big shocker type reveal. And I was like, what? It felt very manipulated to just kind of be a shock. So that way you would have interest moving into the next film. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And, um, overall, which is I different. And even with Alden, uh, and, and Reich, Aaron Reich, Aaron Reich. Um, as Han, he just felt like a very flat version of Han. He never felt like, and then people say, oh, well, you know, he was young and he wasn't quite himself yet, but, um, he didn't have that imbued sense of just like dynamic. And I didn't need to know where Han came from. Okay. I kind of liked the idea of knowing that he came from this like checkered background that was the and part then I, he could I didn't make like, up. I didn't like whatever. that. Uh, part in the movie that was the, like the main part. I was like, oh, yeah. that's bad." There's How many. He got, his, he got his name specific in a specific way. I was like, "What? Get yeah, out of here!" There's many things about this that I could talk that I didn't yeah. like. I didn't like the whole, you know, rise of the droid rights, oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. romantic <laughs> relationship between Lando and her, uh, potentially that's implied in the weird way that she's like in the ship now. And I didn't the whole run that they did over the, the castle run. The castle run was like very unclimactic and very obvious it, it just everything about it was just like this isn't star wars to me it just feels very like meh yeah okay um so yeah because of that and not because it's a bad that's the thing we talked about this it's not because it's a bad film i think yeah. i gave it like a c or c plus yeah. or something like that but it's really just my experience that i yeah. got from it you okay. know was not a good one and yeah. i left it going like ah angry gotcha so there there you go i gotcha uh my number seven is Axel, <laughs> <laughs> um, robot dog made by war people, bad war people in yeah. the government. Um, super generic, everything. It was yeah. like trying to be, it's kind of like trying to be Transformers light, like the first Transformers movie. Um, it seemed like a combination of Transformers and, it's PG, and, and, and Short that's a, Circuit. That's a bad thing. Um, I think maybe some kids like the idea, might have enjoy it, but like, the main people in the movie are like teenagers. And so I don't know who, if, if they're trying to appeal to a teenage demographic, why not do PG 13 and, and make up the action or the ante a little bit, but mm-hmm. it's a PG movie and action is vanilla, like light even. And, um, the characters are, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, the acting is not good all the way around the, there's like these really silly conflicts, um, throughout the film, um, and the way that, that, that it ended, you could just tell that it was kind of like low budget, like it ended up just being like a helicopter versus the dog, like, you <laughs> know, this war machine dog versus one helicopter. <laughs> like, <laughs> what is like, going to happen? It's kind of like, that's all we can afford guys. Yeah. Um, anyways, that's like a joke from Deadpool. That yeah. So I could see, I could see maybe some kids liking it, like younger kids. Yeah. Uh, not teenagers though. I don't, I don't know what the, who they're aiming for with this, but I did not, I did not care for this film. Okay. The end. That is Axel. <laughs> awesome. Uh, then I'll get into my number six. Do it. Um, worst six. Uh, so this is one, another one that might people might flip their tables or something a little bit at. Um, <laughs> okay. Really didn't like this movie. Uh, Ralph breaks the internet. Oh, come on, flip the table. Yeah. Okay. Um, but the worst of the year. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Again, was a film for the great cinematography. I mean, it's you know it's yeah. CG, great but videography. Great with, yeah, great job <laughs> with the CG. Um, voice acting is fine. It didn't feel phoned in. Yeah. Um, but the story. Um, which is so strong in animated films to me. Sure. Um, there's just, there's like so little to this story that I actually enjoyed and actually felt angry about some of the ways, excuse me, that they moved the characters forward. Mm, okay. um, specifically um, with Ralph and Daphne, or sorry, Penelope. Yes. <laughs> Ralph Daphne? and Penelope, yeah. <laughs> what movie do you watch? It felt like they needed to go in some direction with the characters, and so they were trying to give them growth motivations throughout the film. growth of Asians. growth of Asians. Um, But by doing so, they they more or less had to take all of the, the 
relationship that they had film put together over the course of the first film, mm-hmm. which was Rocky in the first film, and kind of had to manipulate circumstances into getting the two of those yeah. characters angry at each other. Sure. It never felt real, never felt righteous. Like if these were two people in real life, I would be like, You're both being idiots. Yeah. Um and that's not a good thing. Yeah. Like if the film was trying to make that message the thing, then that's great, but it wasn't. Yep. It was trying to go with, well, this person's right and this person's wrong. Um, so I didn't enjoy okay. that. Okay. I thought the overall humor was not anywhere near as creative or funny. It felt like to me, the emoji movie light, mm. uh, it felt like they were tricking, you know, parts of the internet that we all know. I mean, they did, a, was it better than the emoji movie? Uh, yeah. Okay. It's better than the emoji movie, but <laughs> I, I don't want to talk about the emoji movie. Um, <laughs> Patrick Stewart. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but like, so overall going to the film, I also had very high expectations because the yeah. first Ralph film, um, was one of my favorites, of that year. I mean, I thought it was a really good film, really inventive and done better than I would have expected. And so, um, this did not make me happy. I did not enjoy it. I, there was nothing from it that I came out and I'm like, yeah, I'm glad I invested the time that I did (laughs) into that movie. But really, we don't ever really, we're never glad to invest time in these worst of movies. (laughs) I know, but usually (laughs) like I can find some redemptive quality, like a character story arc or an animation thing. But this one, there was nothing about it that, that, Gave me like, well, at least that, you know. Slaughter World. What was the name of that? I think it was Slaughter World. Yeah. Something? Yeah. But that that whole plot line felt really silly and manipulated. I mean, we talked about this in the actual review, which you can go back and listen to. But, you know, Vanellope's character is literally coded by humans to fit within a certain video yeah. game that in the first movie they substantially, and I'm going way too detail here, but they substantiated <laughs> that like literally that's her game. And then the second film, they suddenly go, nope, well, be just because she yeah. likes it better. I she gotcha. fits even better in a different. So it just it it kind of simultaneously sucked as a film, yeah. but then also ruined elements of the prior one. Yeah, you know. So and not majorly, but but somewhat. So that's why I'm putting it at my number six. Okay, my number six is the possession of Hannah Grace. Ow. Um, and actually this last six here are gonna have a lot of similar qualities and reason why they're bad from in my list. Um. So just be prepared for that. Uh, okay, so the possession of Hannah Grace. Um, really scary concept. Uh, lady uh, works in a morgue, not graveyard shift, only one in this giant facility. Mm-hmm. And it's dark, creepy, and this uh, body comes to life and like starts like haunting her. And it's and I thought the trailers were pretty scary. But the movie is not. It's PG thirteen, <laughs> and anytime there's a movie like that, where I feel like it, it started off with the idea of it being rated R, kind of like you talk about earlier, and then scale it back to PG thirteen, it's hardly ever good. Yeah. Um, it's um, it's just it's there's a lot of jump scares. Uh, some of them not earned at all. Like, and some of them aren't even like things to be afraid of, you know, like a cat, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. Um, <laughs> the worst one is when they jump scare you with right. a reflection of the person. So stuff like that. You there, know? There is the one redeeming quality of this movie is there is a couple of really like, there's maybe one like tense moment that I was like, Ooh, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like, but that was it. Like, I was like, okay, that was an effective, like tension building, scary thing that just yeah. happened. Yeah. Uh, but that was it. Uh, other than that, it was, it was kind of boring. Um, and not, not nearly as scary as I feel like it could have been. Yeah. Um, but yeah, possession of Hannah Grace, not, uh, worthwhile this year for me. Okay. Yeah. All right. What you got? Number five. Number five. I feel like this might be one you mentioned at some point, but, Hmm. uh, it's a film called Holmes and Watson. Hey. Um, I think based on the quick review that I gave it when we were talking about it, um, I probably, people might have thought this was going to be higher on my list. Uh, but really what it came across as to me was a series of individual sketches mm-hmm. about two characters to pretending to be Holmes and Watson. Right. That's really what it felt like. Yeah. So it was a very disjointed feeling movie. I get that. And the the biggest thing about this, you know, because it's such a strong series of comedies with John C. Riley and Will yeah. Ferrell, is what is the humor like? Mm-hmm. And nothing about the humor in the entire film even really made me chuckle. Mm-hmm. And that... So it failed in yeah. pretty much every regard because right. pretty much every scene was just a setup for you to laugh. Yeah. And I never laughed. Mm-hmm. And the plot, I wasn't even expecting the plot to be intelligently put mm-hmm. together because it's stupid. But yeah. it's like they took like the 
the dumbest aspects of what they could think of for parodying Holmes and Watson yeah. and then try to tie that into modern cultural issues, but in a purely um, like infantile way yeah. and then try to turn that into comedy. And it didn't work in any regard. There was nothing humorous about any of the characters. Yeah. There wasn't one standout character that I'm like, okay, well, at least they were redemptive yeah. to the film. Mm-hmm. It, there was like more of almost cameo type roles with the secondary characters yeah. where they would just kind of show up briefly to play this dumb role and then they would be gone out of the film. Right. Um, and Will Ferrell and J- John C. Riley can be really funny together. Yeah. I mean, Talladega Nights is one of my favorites. Uh, Step Brothers is kind of mixed, but I, I still yeah. think it's funny. Um, but yeah, this was just like the worst of their humor yeah. for an hour and a half. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it, I wasn't expecting anything. That's the thing. Like I was like, this came out of nowhere. Right. I wasn't even expecting the movie to come out. When you have a low bar already to still be disappointed is yeah, a big deal. <laughs> yeah. And I think the thing that yeah. they've always done, and this is kind of it with, with their comedies is that there's this, this energy or this like sense of like suspense yeah. with their comedy that you never really know what, what they're going to say or where they're going to go with it. But this one, like, because maybe it was tied to Holmes and Watson, everything felt so flagged. Yeah. So, like, okay, I know exactly where this is going to go. Okay, well, he's going to pretend to be a really good boxer because we saw that yeah. in the Sherlock Holmes remakes, but he's going to fail it miserably, you sure. know? So, that, yeah, yeah it just, it, it fell flat for me. And I would rank it further down the line of being a worse film if I had gotten angry by it. But yeah. I wasn't expecting anything from right. it personally. So, it was just kind of like, stupid. Yeah. Waste of time. <laughs> But I'm not as angry about it as some of the ones we have coming. I gotcha. Yeah, I have one that I'm upset about coming next for my number five, and that is The Cloverfield Paradox. Oh! Okay, so I love the Cloverfield movies. I know know you know as much on the first one, but I really like the first one. It set set the stage for found footage, the whole mystery box that J.J. Abrams creates in his filmmaking, uh, producing roles. Um, And then... 10 Cloverfield Lane was one of my favorite movies of that year. Um, I really love that. And it's it's got that whole sci-fi thing potentially that I really liked. Um, and then and what was really cool about 10 Cloverfield Lane is it, they gave you your first announcement and trailer two months before the movie came out. Yeah. I was like, wow, this is so cool. <laughs> yeah. And um, this one was like, I knew something was coming out, but I didn't know what, when it was coming out. And then they were like, during the Super Bowl, they showed a trailer and they're like, this will be on Netflix after the game. Yeah. I was like, what? Yeah. And I was like super hyped to go watch it. <laughs> and um, the next Cloverfield, they'll drive to your house and throw yeah, DVDs through exactly. your window. JJ Abrams <laughs> delivers it personally. There you go. Yeah. No, um, it, uh, it was so disappointing. Like I liked some of it. I liked the setup, but you could tell they were trying to make it bigger than what their budget allowed it for. Yeah. Um, it was nonsensical at times and the reasoning behind making things nonsensical and things, why things were happening. It was, it was just cause, well, this thing happened. And so just weird things are going to happen. Just nonsensical things. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Um, and then they tried to tie it into the, like the tri- as make it like a trilogy at the end, try- tie it into the first one. And yeah. I was like, that doesn't work. You know, <laughs> I was like, it just didn't work. I yeah. was so disappointed because I was so excited. So this is probably the biggest thing on my list of my excitement, just being utterly disappointed for it. Yeah. Cause I was just like rolling on that hype train. I love the first two. Uh, this was total letdown, but yeah. Well, and I would say this isn't on my worst of list. I think mainly cause I was expecting it to be bad. Um, yeah, I wasn't. Right. <laughs> I loved, we talked about 10 Cloverfield Lane, but yeah. it definitely did an arc up there. The original Cloverfield I didn't enjoy. Yeah. And so what tipped it off for me is with a lot of these films that they don't have a huge budget to make yeah. something out of, they always do their best to bring in the biggest names they can find. Yeah. Because it's like, well, if we don't have a great budget. We don't have like all this stuff to help us out. At mm-hmm. least let's get some big names in there right. so people will be interested. And so it kind of felt like that. It felt like we don't have a lot of stuff that going going for this film except for the names or the name of the film, yeah. and then also hopefully yeah. the actors. Yeah. But yeah. All right. Well, what Didn't you got, like number uh, four, homie? So you mentioned uh, that the Ten Clo- or sorry, the Cloverfield Paradox was probably your biggest letdown. Yeah. Uh, this film was probably one of my top biggest letdowns, probably the top biggest letdown mm. of the year. Uh, it's a film that you mentioned called The Predator. Hey. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like you said, uh, the original Predator is such a favorite of mine yeah. in so many ways. It was like the right place, right time. I was just getting into really watching cinema and experiencing different types of films that I'd never watched Mm -hmm. before. Um, And when I watched The Predator, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so good, so crazy. And 
off the wall, but like intense and cool and yeah. sci-fi-y. Um, and the second one was somewhat disappointing, but it was still fun and yeah. quirky and it felt within the same spirit overall, even though it went in some very strange directions of the first film. Mm-hmm. And then we had, you know, the Predators movie, Predators yeah. uh, and the remakes and it, it this was like, well, hopefully, it feels like now they're trying to do it right. Mm-hmm. They're trying to bring back the original. I thought the Predators was okay. Yeah, with bringing back Shane Black and really, imbra- they've done it wrong. Like, let's try and really get right. the idea of what the Predator movie is, a Predator movies should be about back. Mm-hmm. You know, Alien versus Predator was just like garbage to me. Um, so this film was just a letdown in so many ways. It was stupid. Yeah, yeah. it was. <laughs> like, that's the biggest thing. The <laughs> plot was. made no sense. People just made decisions in the plot that we're just completely motivated out of like, well, we have to do something here. So we're going to do it. So the decisions of the characters made absolutely no sense at mm-hmm. all. It felt weirdly mean spirited at times towards some of the characters that like didn't deserve to die as gruesomely as they sure. did. Yeah. And then one of the main villains of the film that they built up the entire film yeah. as being a main villain that you expect is going to have this gruesome end. They don't even show you yeah. that person dying. Right. They just, to kill them off camera. Yeah. Which is like, what? Like, what yeah. did it, uh, that mixed with, I'm getting heated now. I yeah. apologize. But like that mixed <laughs> with what you talked about, which is the end of the film yeah. being some of the dumbest stuff I've yeah. ever seen. Which is just, it left me with this horrible feeling yeah. of like, you literally just feel like you can come into this, throw all this garbage on the screen. Cause it's predator flavored yeah. and make a ton of money and then set it up this franchise. And yeah. it, so it just, it really left me angry. Oh man. You know, the, yeah. the, the, the the only redemptive thing slightly about it was the like the camaraderie of sorts that was there between the soldiers, but that was yeah. completely manipulated and it was it was dumb and the humor was super lowbrow. Yeah. You know, the thing about the original Predator is it had humorous moments, but they were there more to break the tension right. and to aid in moving you into stuff. Whereas with this film, it was like, we're going to highlight the humor yeah. and make that a big feature. And it didn't make any sense why Olivia Munn's character suddenly becomes like Miss Rambo. And she's like, I'm going to go around shooting her. It's like, she's been a scientist her entire life. Yeah, she's yeah, never yeah. been military trained. Um, she probably plays, uh, plays Call of Duty or something. Yeah, it didn't make any sense <laughs> why Quinn in this film... Uh, became the character that he did. Like, it didn't make any sense for the military to treat him the way that they did. Yeah. Uh, it didn't, yeah. So there's just so many things about it. Even, like, I remember, like, the, well, we call it Predator because that just sounds cooler. Like, yeah. stupid dialogue yeah. and stupid plot decisions and just left me really feeling angry. I get you, man. <laughs> so I totally feel you on that. That's why this one is my I number totally four. totally feel you on that. Uh, let's bring it down to my number four, and I don't think you've seen this movie. It's called The Titan. I did not. Um, this is Netflix original as well. Sam Worthington Ew. stars in this one. Basically, this dude, uh, he... Um, it's post-apocalyptic, so that's why I wanted to watch it. I probably wouldn't have watched it. Anyway. Yeah. So I was like, okay, so it's not apocalyptic, but it's like interstellar where we need to colonize another planet because Earth is dying. And uh, so they're like, okay, we found this planet called Titan, but we ha- but we can't survive there. So like, we have to adjust our DNA in order to be able to change how we are physically to live there. And so it's like this family moves, military family moves and he becomes a test subject and starts to change and it gets weird. Like he, it's kind of like the fly a little bit, um, but not like scary good. Like that kind of was, it was more like, it's more like the fly, but then like he's, it's so dumb. Okay, so <laughs> like I'm having a hard time just explaining it. It's just for you. a dumb movie. It's yeah. I I liked some elements of it, the setup, but um, it, it, I'm a huge like family being together person. That's like a favorite theme of mine in film and mm-hmm. reconciliation and all that stuff. And yeah, and this was just kind of foregoes that and is like, well, he's doing it for mankind. And then like I don't know, it just it just it wasn't done well. There was some bad acting. Um, and you didn't get a full scope of, of the earth, you know, dying because it was a lower budget film. Um, just such, it was just, I guess it wasn't a disappointment because I really wasn't looking, it was just literally scrolling through Netflix. I was like, Hey, new movie. <laughs> and, uh, it was like, Oh, the earth is dying. I was like, this is like interstellar and it's not even close. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was kind of a bummer, but, uh, um, yeah, the Titan don't check it out people. There you go. That's for you. All right, Joel, what you got? Number three. Number three. We're getting there. Yeah. Um, this movie, I'll just say the name, Robin Hood. Hey. Um, this movie was the only film out of all the films 
except for maybe the next one, that I really felt like was personally condescending. <laughs> okay. Um, and we talked about this. Like, my title for this film is, like, Robin Hood, colon, The Condescension. Joel, um, uh, rant, movie rant, go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> no, I'm not yes. going to do that. <laughs> I will rant, but I'm not going to time it, because then I'm, I'll probably just continue on and on and on to see how long I can go. <laughs> um, this film, literally from the get-go of the opening dialogue, starts telling you that you're in pretty pretty much an idiot for the things that you've you've heard and you understand about the Robin Hood saga. And mm. I, I get what they were going for, which is yeah. like, remove all of your boundaries and pre, presuppositions and preconceptions of what Robin Hood is about. But the way they went about that from the very get-go was like, you're an idiot if you ever thought that you knew Robin Hood. And then from that moment forward, it set me up with like, okay, well, let's see what you got, film. And they constantly <laughs> just let me down. And those like constantly was like, well, what's the, how is that? Where is that? How? Because they set up like this weird world within Robin Hood where they turned what was this simple story of you know, you know the 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 might the the might of the the small personal young like the citizens that they can sure. turn it against the powers that be yeah. and stick it to them. You know, the rob from the rich and give to the poor, and they try to turn it into this epic of like revenge and um, there was like anti Christian and anti like religion undertones that were like mixed throughout the film that had no reason to be in there because it was completely pandery. It was mm. one sided. They're trying to act like, Pandery. oh, yeah, they were trying to act like, oh, well, the Christians are these horrible people, you know, to the Muslims and yeah. the people that during the Crusades. And it's like, I'm not trying to justify the Crusades. I, I don't know very little about history, but I can guarantee you in that time period, the Muslims and the people that were they were fighting the Christians in the Crusades were not treating everyone lovingly. They weren't going around. So with you're like basing hunts. this off of actual history. Right. And that's why you're disappointed. Well, th yes, because they tried to treat this like. I'm going to educate you um, on how this is supposed to be. I still and think so, of it in fairy tale kind of language. Yeah, but they try like because they they basically set it up like this is the real story. This is the true story. <laughs> I didn't feel condescended to, but yeah, I felt condescended to. And then <laughs> the whole entire like the rocket powered uh, arrows that was just I can't live that down. Like the they fact that rocket that, powered it was arrows. like a bazooka bazooka arrow. They were just big arrows with. Big, big, big strings or whatever they used big to pull. Strings. Big Well, they cables. had the one thing where they shot the dynamite and it like blew up. Well, you arrow. strap a bomb to it, basically. Yeah, it's just that, that that didn't happen back then. They didn't have that. You don't know that. I you did. weren't <laughs> there, Joel. Okay, yeah. Maybe <laughs> maybe in that moment, they they invented rocket artillery. Okay. okay. Uh, so gotcha. th there were stupid things like that. The romance between the two uh, main characters was completely forced to manipulate between Maid Marian and Robin Hood. Okay. It felt really silly and goofy. Jamie Foxx's little John felt mean, mean spirited and it didn't make okay. any sense why he knew the things that he did within the film. It didn't even make sense how he knew English since he came from like a Muslim land, how he knew that or why. And then it was like, they made Joel. this big deal at the beginning about his son being killed. But then as soon as his son was dead, he was like, well, now I don't really care. You know, they didn't even mourn. The ma ben Mendelsohn was the only good aspect of the film, but he was so cartoony over the top that it was kind of like, I couldn't take it seriously. Uh, and the last thing I would say about this, my rant will then be over. <laughs> rant almost rant over, over. And hashtag whatever. Uh, end quote. Is I did not at all enjoy the way that the film well, I'm, I'm not going to go. See, presented you know, itself. Gonna, no, no, no. no I, 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 <laughs> presented I, I, itself. I can keep going. I'll stop. I feel like I'm just getting on board with this like rant train now. And it's difficult because these are my top three most disliked films of oh, the yeah. year. But yeah. So yeah. I'll, I'll just stop there. Everybody's going to be like, well, I wanted to hear what you had to say. But no, I'm going to do so, it. So um, my number three, and I'm not going to say a lot about it because you already talked about it. It's Holmes and Watson. Hey. Hey. Uh, movies is bad. Um, it's It's not funny. I don't know if I laughed. Here's the thing. This is what it feels like, and this is exactly what I speculated it looked like from the trailers. Yeah. That uh, Will Ferrell, John C. Riley were like, just happened to be crossing paths to go like film movies in different parts of the country. <laughs> and they're like, hey, what are you doing this week? Oh, I don't know. Um, I, hey, you know what would be funny? What if we made a movie just like right now, this weekend, yeah. about Holmes and Watson, but it was like comical. And and we just did that. And like, yeah. that's what I felt like it was. Yeah. They just came up with stuff on the spot that they thought was funny because they had been hanging out and talking a bunch. And they were like, oh, we're really funny right now. And it was just like, hey, let's film that. Yeah. And it it didn't, it was, it wasn't good. Um, and 
I think the they were just ho- they were just hoping for that John C. Riley, Will Ferrell like team up power that to, to like push them through to like make it a winner, and it's just not a winner. It's just a bad movie. Yeah. Um, and you hit all the great points earlier. So there you go. That's it. That was my number three. What's your all number right. two? Well, let me just say, what's up for say my it. number three? Yeah. <laughs> I'm Robin Hood, you're going back to it. I'm going back to it. I'm going to give it to you. I decided I'm going to give it to you. You can't give the main character the ability to just kill whoever, whenever, however, with his arrows like that, and then suddenly think that there's going to be any mystery as to whether he's going to survive fights. That's all I'm going to say. Anyway, rant over. So my top two, Matt. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Top two, go. I had a difficult time deciding between the two of these. Both of these films left me equally angered and frustrated coming out. Um, I put them in the order that I did, not necessarily because... At any given moment, I feel like these two could fall place, but I had to put one in the top. And I had to put one in the second right. spot. Number two, what you Really, got? the only reason I would put this one in the second spot versus the first spot is because of the characters and okay. the acting. Sure. And I felt like I could, that's the only slightly redemptive because I like one of the yeah. characters or somewhat in the film. Yeah. So the film I'm talking about, and you're going to go, what? Because you kind of maybe like this film more than I did. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. <laughs> this is a fun movie. It's not a great movie. It's not a particularly good movie, but I thought See, I had fun. <laughs> I did not have fun. I had fun. Uh, you say it was a fun movie. I say it was a dumb movie that had no fun to it at all. I mean, oh, baby from boy. the one, the fact that dinosaurs don't cry. Which they gave dinosaurs tears. That's they're not I, that real dinosaurs, make, Joel. They're lizard dinosaurs. They are dinosaurs. They have no tear ducts. They're not created to cry. They don't cry. They're not actual dinosaurs. So that's how one do you thing. know dinosaurs don't cry? So that's one thing, Matt. You and weren't there in the Jurassic period. The peri- the <laughs> actual the dinosaur winking and nodding to the camera knowingly. He's a smart dinosaur. The, but that like the the winking and nodding to the camera with the whole. Like sad, you know, Stegla, whatever it's I think <laughs> dying in the smoke, you know, to like Stigla manipulate, whatever to manipulate Dude, your it's a brachiosaurus. brachiosaurus. Come on. Like, this is like five-year-old This whole film was like, what are you doing right now? <laughs> I was just so angered <laughs> thinking about where we've gone from the original Jurassic Park with, you know, the, the, the amazing awe and wonder and craziness and violence and terror with like the good acting and special effects and amazing cinematography and scenes to you have them oh no we're trapped in this thing and lava's gonna get us so we gotta get out of here quicker than get it like it just was like so manipulatedly stupid um i mean he like i said the only reason that i put this one too instead of Flip my one table over was chris pratt yeah who i enjoy yeah. and i like his acting in the film uh Bryce Dallas Howard wasn't awful, like mm-hmm. she was serviceable okay. in the role, but it, it was the the it was literally like two films. You had like the film, which is them trying to do the island stuff, and then you had your separate film, which is like the it was like an episode of Black Mirror or something like that, where they're like auctioning off the yeah. dinosaurs. And the whole, literally, the very ending of the film, where I'm just gonna spoil it, like the little girl because she's, you know who she is. I won't mm-hmm. spoil that aspect, but because she is who she is, she ends up releasing the dinosaurs into the world, possibly injuring and killing thousands of people. Yeah. And we're supposed to treat that like it's a good decision. Like mm. that is, that was like horrible to me. At that point, the dinosaurs were in their enclosures. Yeah, they were treated bad, but they were in there. They were dying. You know, special people would have come in and probably tried to put them into like, you know, holding containers so they could have been safe and stuff like that. I, I, they were dying. You're right. They were dying. They were being but, gassed. They were mean gas, but I, I'm like, maybe it's time. Literally, the only reason they put that there was because like they had to move this into like a third film, and now the dinosaurs are out. Yeah, you know, it just felt completely Jurassic stupid. Jurassic World and, Three yeah. unleashed. So <laughs> I, I'm not gonna keep going on. I could keep going on. Okay, but I'm not gonna do it. You all gotta right, go. that's totally fine. Yeah, that's all right. I had fun with Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom. Okay, uh, my number I did two. Not. I did okay, not. here's my number two and number one are almost the same movie. Okay. Okay. I. I one is no better than the other. I just had to put one in two spots, so I just picked one. Okay. Okay. Actually, I take that back. There's one element in the number two spot that I like. Similar to me. There you okay. go. Okay. So uh, number two is Truth or Dare. Mm-hmm. It's a Blumhouse film. I like Blumhouse, what they do. Their business model is fantastic. Um, not all of their movies are fantastic, but they've been doing better lately. Um, Truth or Dare, the reason why it's higher than my number one spot is because the concept I thought was very interesting. Mm -hmm. It's basically like final destination, but like this truth or dare, if you actually like play the game, you could die. Yeah. Uh, If you take the dare and you don't do it, you die basically. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So that's kind of how it goes. 
uh, this movie was really weird because it seems like and this this doesn't sound identical to my criticisms of my film number one. Um, it's it's as if there's chunks of the movie missing. Like they just like took out bits and parts and you don't know how one person gets from one part to the other uh, in the film. The acting for the most part is okay. Um, but the there's this one element I thought was creepy in the trailer, but it's not creepy in the movie. It's like kind of silly. It's like when they do this, tr- they play the truth or dare game. There's like, like their faces get possessed and make this really like crazy, like smile <laughs> I think face. I've seen images of that. Yeah. They, they showed blips of that in the trailer. It's like, Oh, that's kind of creepy. But in the movie, it's like this person's smiling at a weird, you yeah. know, it's just a weird thing. Yeah. Um, and it just made it cheesy. Um, made it cheesy. You didn't know what was going on. The plot was bad. It's like, it's like went through a hundred different rewrites. Uh, I think it came out at the beginning of the year along with the other movie I'm going to talk about in a minute. Yeah. And it was just a bad horror movie. I like scary movies and this was not a good one. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, but yeah, truth of dare, no bueno, unfortunately. And, uh, Joel, that brings us to our number one. Number one. Yeah. Okay. So I mentioned in our, run up in our like it's dishonorable Jurassic mentions. Three, isn't yeah, it? it is. Okay. Uh this dishonorable mentions <laughs> uh that there was a film Life of the Party that I didn't put on the list. And that's because my Oh, number I know one what your film, number one is. Yes, the Happy Time Murderers. Yes. I knew that was gonna be it. Melissa McCarthy is not having a good year. Um <laughs> both of those films Wait, were really she might bad. get a she might get an Oscar nomination. She might. I haven't seen it if I haven't if seen did. that movie either, but yeah. it's got uh what's his face? I can't forget yeah. his name. I think what I would say is the Melissa McCarthy comedy re- led uh, leading comedy film yeah. uh, era has probably come to a close. Right, because the movie uh, she's going to get an Oscar for yeah. potentially. I've never seen a, a movie kind of end that. Yeah. As some of the era of somebody as like this type of film star right. with as well ending the era of a type of film as this film probably has done. Right. I think this has basically ended the idea of doing Henson uh, oh, comedy yeah. films yeah. for a good 10 years sure, <laughs> or sure. so. I could be wrong. Um, this film had so many missteps, so many dumb ideas. There were so many things about it, um, that were just really poorly handled and poorly mm-hmm. put together, even in the production side of things leading up to it. But the film itself is very, uh, the best way I could say it is very distasteful. Yeah. Uh, it treats pretty much the lore and the, not the lore, but like the fun of the Muppets mm-hmm. and what that's put together over so many different ages and time periods. Like I remember watching the Muppet show with my mm-hmm. dad. Um, I watched some of the Muppet movies. They've taken all that. And basically like if I had to not be super crude about it, but it's basically just put a giant dump on it. Um, mm-hmm. It kind of like, <laughs> it takes everything you think is good about the Muppets and it goes, nope, because this, <laughs> and uh, it has just really stupid plot lines and it's really horrific like scenes with like violence and sexual stuff yeah uh it has really over the toply stupid ideas that yeah. are mixed in with like muslim mccarthy being part puppet like where does that even like how right. would that even work because puppets <laughs> internal organs are just foam which i think they were trying to treat as like this funny thing but they treat it as like a real serious plot point <laughs> so the movie was like trying to be like this off the wall zany comedy mixed with like a serious murder, drama, noir, investigation type film. And it missed in like every single count. There's no mystery there. There's no intrigue. There's no interest. Yeah. The humor was super flat and stupid and dumb. I felt like personally offended by like a number of the different jokes yeah. and stuff that they kind of threw out there. Um, I can't mention some of them because yeah. they're that like distasteful bad, yeah. and bad. Um, like if this, if, if, if he was trying to, because this film was directed and partially written, I think mostly directed, but by Brian Hansen, mm-hmm. which is the son of Jim Hansen, the yeah. creator of the Muppets. Um, if he was trying to take the film style of the Hansen movies and go in a completely different direction, mm-hmm. like he accomplished it. Yeah. <laughs> if the direction is bad movies, like he he nailed it. Um, and the sad thing is, is like Brian Hansen can turn out some some decent like yeah. good movies, like he did the Muppet Christmas Carol. Um, and that was like a different, a, a pretty good film for the most part. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I could keep going on. I could keep saying all yeah. this bad stuff, but it's, I gotcha. it's one of the films that like, if I had to tell anybody like, don't go see a film. It's that movie. It's that movie. Yeah. Like from last year, like that was the least good film. You're not going to get anything redemptive from it. You're not going to laugh. You might even be offended. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. that's, that's why, but there's nothing redemptive about it. And the last thing I'll say is I, I hope Melissa McCarthy kind of moves into kind of a different style. Of, yeah. I think of, she of might, uh, she's getting some, I can't remember the name. It's like, uh, you, you were right. I can't remember the name of it. Anyways. Um, 
Okay, so that brings me to my number one. There you go. Okay, number one is going to sound awful like number two, but it's because it's Slender Man. Oh, jeez. Uh, I totally mo- forgot about that one. Yeah, this movie was because it came out in January, yeah. which for horror movies is not a good month for horror movies. No, no. Um, this Based movie, upon the very- This one actually does have, name. in more recent history, one of the weirdest like gaps in it that I felt like I've ever experienced in a movie. It's like- um, there's this whole like subplot that that's going on that that just kind of gets forgotten about and like what <laughs> I don't, I was but it's like it's that sequel. happens in movies sometimes but like this one was more jarring than I felt like I've seen recently and then um it is so cliche it felt like Rings okay um I remember where you it's about like that. you know teenage girls like the cliche stereotype like uh, you know uh, I don't even know how to personify that myself but uh, it's it's so cliche stereotype there's chunks of the film missing it seems like it's not scary it's very much like rings where there's like scary images sometimes and they're not scary images they're just run-of-the-mill rings images which are just you know maybe off-putting not scary um and wildly forgettable as you said you didn't even remember it came out this year yeah (laughs) um i had to go back into the archives it'll be like what did i see this year yeah and that was one of them, and it was it was a bad time. I I literally don't remember it. Yeah, like I must have blocked it from myself. I'll say this: it's funny how we keep talking about our different perspectives here, but it's funny how your worst film of the year is one that you just completely forgot about. Yeah, and my worst film of the year is one that I'm like, you I am it. so angered <laughs> by this film. Uh, it doesn't take <laughs> it's a lot. Just a difference. I, it, of, it takes yeah, a lot styles. for me to get angry, but yeah, yeah. So that's it. That's our top 10 worst, unless we see something that we didn't get this chance to see that yeah. we want to throw. Maybe we'll list. revise at some point. Yeah. But anyways, that is our list. Um, guys, email us. Let us know what you thought about it. Again, we have um, the the contest going on. So feel free to, to join into that. It's going to be great. You can hang out with us, go to the movies. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll probably have that another week or two uh, going here. Probably about a week. A week I yeah, yeah, a week. Yeah, by the time you watch us. Yeah. And then... Um, uh, other than that, is there anything else, Joel? No. I'm missing anything. I'm, I'm good. Just We're good. Yeah. Connect with us. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Yep. All the fun stuff at Real Review Media, uh, youtube.com slash the real review. Let us know your thoughts. Email us. And uh, other than that, have an amazing day. And uh, it's been real. It's been real. <laughs>